I had a delivery arrive today. And these are uh, a little on the radioactive side this time. So, what are these? These are tritium or tritium gas tubes, however you want to pronounce that. Um, these are some little tiny ones. They're still, I think I spent about 20 or 25 bucks a pop on these. But you can see they glow. There's a blue one and a green one. Now these, um, the gas inside these, tritium gas, is radioactive. And they coat the inside of the glass tube with a phosphor. A little bit like a uh, fluorescent tube. So the um, particles from the radioactive gas, as they uh, fly off, they cause the phosphor to illuminate or fluoresce. Now these will glow continuously without being charged up in the sun or without any other influence for around about 30 years. Um, probably the, the brightest time will be about the next 20, 21 years. Now I plan to uh, turn these into a ring. I'm going to make two rings. Uh, one of course uh, for my wife and one for a friend of mine who uh, is also a jeweler. So I'm going to see if I can impress. They're only very, very tiny. But um, yeah, well let's have a look at these with the light on. So they are literally tiny little things. You can see under my finger there, very, very tiny. Well, I thought I'd take the time just to have another look at these now that the sun's gone down. Just see how they glow. So it looks like what I'm going to do with these is use some recycled white metal. And I'm going to uh, probably cast two items and then see, I'll let my wife have the first pick of which one she likes. Although the consensus at the moment is probably going to be the green one. And it's not surprising considering the human eye is most sensitive to green. So uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do with these. Um, I've got to get some designs. So there'll be um, a bit of a montage coming up of the design process. And I'm probably going to start by turning the lights on. And uh, I'll be working with a um, uh, working with a design that I've used before, but uh, modifying it slightly. Now, I'm not really sure here. Now that I've actually got these, I can start planning how I'm going to mount them. Um, my initial thought was to make a, a ring with a little gap to house these and then drill in from the side and plug the end of the hole. Another idea has been to fit two grooves to drop it in. And a third is a more traditional method like a claw setting and whatnot. Um, now I do, I have been donated some silver, um, but I don't really have the facilities to work that the way I really need to for this project. Um, so I'll be dealing with white metal. One of the properties of white metal is that it gets brittle. Um, and so you can't really bend it in you like you would in a claw setting. So I have to really deal with what I've got cast and what I can machine. Um, I do have a little bit of gallium here and I can make a gallium alloy with the Babbitt metal. Um, but that has its drawbacks as well. So, um, there is a little bit of silver solder and I have the facilities to melt that. Um, but again, silver solder's melting point is higher than that of Babbitt metal. So it's going to be interesting. I'll do some thinking. And uh, as, soon as, to, as soon as I've decided on how I'm going to do this design, you'll see the, um, the video coming.
So the time has come to slow down and we'll get out of all this time lapse stuff. I know you used to me talking through most of my videos, but uh, not today. I needed to concentrate. So, green or blue? Well, I think green was the consensus. Let's see after all this if it actually fits. All oh, these things are so fragile. <laughs> so difficult to get hold of. Let's see if we can put that in there. All right, well, it's dropped in nicely. Let's see if it'll fit in the recess at the other end. Okay. Has gone in nicely. Where are we? I think it's going to jump out. That's going to be nice in there. All right, now the trick is going to be, can I solder that up without... Um, I might even put a blob of glue in there. Can I solder it up without destroying the thing? This is the bit I'm like super nervous about. You know what, I think I'm going to glue that. Um, just because I don't want to blow it up and I haven't got very many spares. So firstly, let's put the lid back on this one so I don't lose it. And uh, if I touch that with solder or anything like that, that's going to fall apart. No matter what kind of solder I use, it's going to destroy it. So I think I'm going to cheap out and use a tiny little bit of super glue. And I think I'm going to do that on both ends. Yep. So I think I'm going to need a couple of dressmakers pins here. So we'll be back. All right. So we're back with a little bit of illumination this time. Now I'm going to use a trick that I used to use when I used to fix hearing aids. Back when I had the dexterity for this kind of thing. I'm going to drip a little bit of super glue in here. Use the head of a pin to take it to where we need it. And drop you in there. And then we're going to take a little tiny bit in here. We're going to just drip it in slowly. The interesting thing about super glue is it's originally purpose was as a first aid item and like an emergency stitches so it responds it sticks to skin beautifully but it also responds to moisture so when I'm done I'll blow on this and the moisture from my breath should help cure it slowly I'm just filling up this hole a little bit by little bit and we'll get there now it might look like I'm wriggling the pin, but that's actually the shakes from multiple sclerosis tonight. Now that needs to, well that's already stuck there, so I think I'm going to be stuck with it in that position as is. Now I'm hoping when I've drilled the hole it hasn't weakened that top too much, but I like to over engineer stuff. So I think in the grand scale of jewellery design, um, this is probably fairly robust compared to a lot of others. And I've kept the head, I've kept the fitting quite a bit further above the tube there. Not because I want it to snag on things and break, but uh, I want to just protect it a little bit from impact. But this will be probably more of a fancy ring. Alright, so let's get the, uh, the lights turned off here. And we'll turn off the light here. So let's just turn everything off and we'll be back in a moment. Alright, so there's a little bit of light from one of my monitors still, but you can see this is glowing quite noticeably. So if I can model it on my little finger. You can sort of see that here and a bit of reflection as well. Now that'll glow for at least the next 15 years, potentially 30 at a little bit dimmer. But yeah, this will be interesting. I'll let this dry and I'll go and present it and see how it comes across. All right, and we have the finished product, uh, for better or worse, I guess. Uh, on my wife's hand here and we're going to turn the lights out and see what it looks like so you can see it glowing there now an interesting thing about these tritium gas vials is that the phosphor responds to ultraviolet light so if we bring a UV light near it it lights up much brighter and makes a much more interesting effect but uh, what I can tell my wife here is this stuff is worth about $30,000 per gram so it makes it more expensive than diamonds and a lot more expensive than gold. Just there's probably a lot less of it in there. 
but hopefully uh, this is an interesting uh, an interesting result. So I'll leave you all here and um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. <laughs>